Creativity is a necessity for every leader, manager, pastor, businessman, president, politician, father, mother. Creativity is a required necessity for success in leadership. Great leaders are people who know how to manufacture greatness out of smallness. They know how to inspire people and activate their problem solving skills and activate their latent resource potential that may have been lying dormant by deploying creative communication skills. The reason why many leaders fail is that they are not able to inspire their followers to deploy their creative skills, to deploy their problem solving skills in their own creative space. Hello, welcome to today's episode. Today, I'm going to be sharing something really powerful with you, and it is why you need creativity in leadership. Now, according to John Maxwell, everything rises and falls on leadership. And so, if everything rises and falls on leadership, it means that we must understand leadership to be able to succeed in anything that we do. Every nation, every company, every football club that you see today and you admire and you see them making progress, you see them succeeding, or you see them moving forward or blazing the trail in any form, when you see back and trace the success of these entities, you discover that there's a significant impact that good leadership has in making that progress happen. And so in my study and in my observation, I've come to discover that most leaders fail because of two things, a lack of character and a lack of creativity. Many nations today that are blessed with abundance of natural resources, mineral resources, and human resources find themselves living in abject poverty, not because of a lack of resources, but because of a lack of creativity in the leadership of those nations. Many companies have folded up. Many companies have gone the way of dinosaurs because of a lack of creativity in the leadership at different levels of this company. And when I'm talking about leadership, I'm not just talking about leadership at the highest level, let's say the president of nations. I'm also talking about leadership at the micro levels also. Because at different levels of society, we have leaders. You listening to me today, you are a leader somewhere. You're either a leader at your home or you're a leader in your place of work or you're a leader in society. And so many people have failed in their roles as leaders in different capacities because they lack creativity. And so the goal of this episode is to help you actually fix that so that you can understand the role that creativity plays in leadership and so that you can also function with creativity as a leader in whatever capacity that you lead. Now, in order to further answer the question, why do you need creativity in leadership? It is very important that we actually sit back and try to really understand what leadership is. Now, the man, Miles Monroe, a man that I hold in high esteem, he gave a very profound definition of leadership. As a matter of fact, his definition of leadership comes out as one of the best definitions there is out there. Now, here's how Miles Monroe defined leadership. He said, leadership is a capacity to influence others through inspiration, motivated by a passion, generated by a vision, produced by conviction, and ignited by purpose. Wow, that is a fantastic definition of leadership. I'll go over that definition again. Miles Monroe defines leadership like this. He says, leadership is a capacity to influence others by inspiration, motivated by passion, generated by a vision, produced by a conviction, and ignited by a purpose. Now, that definition is a very loaded definition. And that actually covers a lot of key elements that underlies creativity. But for the purpose of today's discussion, I'm going to take a cue from Miles Monroe's definition of leadership and go further to enhance that definition. Now, if leadership is a capacity to influence others, what is the end game of influencing others? What are you trying to achieve when you are leading people? What are you trying to achieve when you are trying to influence people to do something? Understanding this will help you unlock why you need creativity in leadership in whatever level you're leading. Maybe you're leading a team of four people, you're leading a team of 10 people, you're leading a group of 20 people who are leading other groups of people. Maybe you're a general in the army and you're leading a group of soldiers. Maybe you're a lecturer and you're leading students or you're leading other lecturers. Maybe you're a proprietor or you're a CEO and you're leading people in your organization. Maybe you're a football manager and you're leading a group of players. Maybe you're the CTO of a tech company and you're leading other developers. 
Maybe you're a father and you're leading children. You're leading your home. Maybe you're a pastor and you're leading a church. Or maybe you're a president and you're leading a nation. Regardless of the level of leadership where you find yourself today, you need creativity to thrive. You need creativity to excel. Why? Because leadership is a capacity to influence others to do something. And this is where creativity actually comes in. Because what are you influencing others to do as a leader? What is the purpose of your leadership? Now, there are three fundamental goals every leader has. And the first one is to influence others to solve a problem. The second one is to influence others to create value. And then the third one is to influence others to become of better quality. And I'm going to explain this as I begin to answer why creativity is important for leadership why creativity is important in leadership, why you need your creativity and problem-solving skills dialed in as a manager, as a pastor, as a leader, as a CEO, as a coach, in whatever capacity that you lead, as a president, as a government official, as an elected politician, as a business owner, as a father or as a mother, as a student leader or in whatever capacity that you lead. Now, the first goal of leadership is to solve problems and I'm going to explain why I say so. The goal of every true leader is to influence others to become problem solvers in their own creative space. Let's take, for example, the CEO of a company. Let's assume he starts the company and then he shares the vision that he has for the company with a couple of people. And with his shared vision, he tries to inspire them and influence them to create a product so that they can solve a problem. By doing that, he's inspiring and influencing these people to deploy their own problem-solving skills to help achieve the shared vision. And that is exactly how all these big tech companies we see around came about. They came about by someone having a vision, having an idea, and leading people, influencing people to believe in that idea, either by investing some money in their idea, or by deploying their skills in exchange for some benefit, whether payment in stock or payment in cash or in kind, the leader succeeds in motivating these people and inspiring them and influencing them to join him to solve a problem or to help him to solve the problem. Now, that CEO or founder of the company may not have all the skills required to achieve the vision, but he's able to inspire other people to join him in the journey of solving a specific problem. The reason why many leaders fail is that they are not able to inspire their followers to deploy their creative skills, to deploy their problem-solving skills in their own creative space, in their own department, so that they can help in achieving the common goal. The reason why many presidents, many political leaders fail is because they are unable to help their followers deploy their own problem-solving skills in their own creative space, inspire them enough to produce solutions for the problems bedeviling the nation. The job of a leader is not to figure out the solution to all the problems in the place where he leads. The job of a leader is to influence others to become better at problem solving, to become more proficient in solving the problems that they were wired to solve. Now, let's take for example Moses. When Moses was going to build the tabernacle, God gave him different artisans. God gave him different craftsmen. God gave him different builders. God gave him different people who had different skills in their different respects. And Moses' job was to bring those people together to join him and influence them to deploy their problem-solving skills in their own department or in their own creative domain. That is the job of a leader everywhere. Look at Steve Jobs, for example. When Steve Jobs created the Apple company, he inspired people. He inspired his friend, Steve Wozniak, who was a very, very talented engineer at the time. He inspired him to deploy his problem-solving skills in developing the first product that they had as a company. And subsequently, he got people to join him and influence these people to be on top of their game when it came to problem-solving so that collectively, these people could join him in solving a specific problem at a specific time. So having said that, my definition of leadership goes this way. Leadership is a capacity to influence others to become creative, 
problem solvers through inspiration, motivated by passion to solve that problem, generated by a vision of the solution that will cause that problem to be solved, produced by conviction of the possibility of solving that problem and ignited by purpose. Now, if you are familiar with the game of football, you would observe the role a coach or a manager plays in the performance of a team. The manager doesn't go into the pitch to play football, but his job is to train the different players and inspire them and influence them to be on top of their game all the time. The manager's job is to inspire his crew, to inspire his staff, and inspire his players to be able to win games. Every leader's number one job is to unify the resources at his disposal, be it human resources, be it mineral resources, be it raw materials. The job of a leader is to unify the different factors of production, to unify the different resources at his disposal to solve a problem or to overcome a common opposition or to defeat a common enemy. Now, if you're a leader and you don't have a clear definition of the problem you are born to solve or you were elected to solve or you were appointed to solve or you were meant to solve, then you would have problems because you will not be able to achieve anything as a leader. The goal of leadership is to solve a problem, to influence others to solve a problem. The goal of leadership is to influence others through inspiration and cause them to deploy their problem-solving skills in a collective and a unified way. Now, if what I've said is true, and of course it is true, then it means that creativity is a necessity for leadership. Creativity is a necessity for every leader to succeed. Creativity is a necessity for every leader, manager, pastor, businessman, president, politician, father, mother, or leader in whatever capacity. Creativity is a required necessity for success in leadership. The primary goal of leadership is to ignite the creativity of the followership and to harness the problem-solving ability in a group of people for mutual benefit. Having said that, the second goal of leadership is to create value, right? As a leader, you're either creating value by creating more revenue, generating more sales, creating better products or services, creating better environment or a better experience, or creating a movement. So as a leader, if you are not solving a specific problem, you should be creating some value of some sort or doing both. Now, what does it mean to create value as a leader? Now, the reason why I want to really drill down and break down this concept of creating value is because many people go about saying, oh, you have to add value to people. You have to create value. But most times, they never spend time to really explain what it means to create value. So what does it mean to create value? To create value is to give people a better, safer, surer, clearer, faster, less painful way to achieve an outcome they desire. And as a leader, you do this by unifying the resources at your disposal, by mobilizing the factors of creation and the factors of production at your disposal. As a leader, you also achieve this by increasing the quality of the people at your disposal by activating their creative genius. Look at Steve Jobs. Look at how he inspires his staff. Look at how he inspires his engineers to bring out the best in themselves. Look at every great leader in history. Look at the man Martin Luther King Jr. Look at how he inspired people with his words. Look at how he inspired them to think differently so that he could create a better place, create a better environment for people of color. Now, this is the burden of leadership to create value, to create a new environment, to create a new experience, to create a new solution. So, let's say you're a leader in a company and you're leading a team of people or you're a manager somewhere. Your job is to create value by influencing the people who you work with. Your job is to create value by influencing people you are connected to or people who report to you or who you report to or people who you work with on the same level. You create value by unifying these resources to help save your client or your customers time or to help them achieve the outcome they desire with more certainty or to help your team make better products and services for the clients and the customers that you serve in your domain or to reduce the pain involved in getting the services and the products that your company provides or that your team delivers. Now, if this is true and it is, it means you need creativity because to create value, 
you need to be creative. It takes creativity to solve problems and it takes creativity to create value. Now, that brings me to the third goal of leadership. The third goal of leadership is to leverage resources and change the state of these resources by making them of better quality or quantity. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's take an example of some mineral resources that can be found in large deposits in some countries around the world. For example, crude oil, gold, silver, diamond. Now, crude oil is useless in its unprocessed state. When crude oil is unprocessed, it is useless and valueless to people. And so in order to make crude oil, gold, silver, diamond, bronze, precious stones, you name it, in order to make these mineral resources become useful, they need to go through a creative process. They need to be processed. And through processing, these mineral resources can be turned into marketable and sellable quantities. Now, the same thing goes for human resources. You'll find that great leaders have an uncanny ability to take ordinary people and turn them into extraordinary people. You'll find that extraordinary leaders have the ability to ignite something in ordinary people, ignite the fire in them and make them great. Check a man like Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came on the scene and assumed his leadership role, he did it with a goal in mind. He met people who were fishermen and turned them to fishers of men. How? He processed them. He processed them and changed their state, changed the quality of their thinking, changed the quality of their output, changed their problem-solving capacity and increased it to a very high level that these ordinary fishermen became fishers of men. A man like Peter who was only known for being able to catch fishes, became a man who was now so influential in his days. Peter became a man who could pull crowds. He became a man who could influence people, who could give a speech before 3,000 people and cause these people to go in a particular direction because he had become a man of a higher quality. He had experienced a change of state by coming in contact with a leader like Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ made it a duty to make men, ordinary men, become extraordinary. And he's still doing it today. That's why when you receive Jesus into your heart, you become a better person. You become a new creation. You become a new kind of man. You become a new type of man. Now, the job of every leader is to change the state and the quality of people that are at his disposal in a bid to achieve a common goal. Great leaders are people who know how to manufacture greatness out of smallness. They know how to inspire people and activate their problem-solving skills and activate their latent resource potential that may have been lying dormant by deploying creative communication skills. So the bottom line is that until your mineral resources, until your human resources, until the raw materials, whatever they may be, go through creative process, they can never become useful to people or useful to the society. And so the job of every leader is to improve the quality of the resources at their disposal. Now, this is another reason why some nations that are blessed with human resources, mineral resources, and all kinds of resources are still living in poverty, are still living in darkness because they have leaders that lack creativity. They have leaders that lack the ability to ignite problem-solving ability in people. They have leaders that lack the ability to create value. They have leaders that lack the ability to leverage resources. They have leaders that lack the ability to create greatness out of smallness. They have leaders that lack the ability to transform raw materials, unprocessed, unfinished products into marketable and sellable commodities that can be exported into other territories. Now, as a leader, if you want to achieve these three goals of leadership, which is number one, to solve a specific problem, number two, to create value, and number three, to leverage resources, you need creativity. And if you lack creativity, you fail at achieving all three of these goals. This is the reason why most leaders fail. And I believe that by listening to this episode, the creativity in you has been fired up such that your leadership skill will begin to function in its full capacity so that you'll be able to solve specific problems in your domain. You'll be able to inspire your team, inspire your followers, inspire the people who listen to you or people who you lead, inspire them to solve problems in their own creative space inspire them to become more proficient at deploying their creativity 
towards solving specific problems in their different departments and domains. The moment you are able to achieve this, you succeed in your leadership journey. The moment you are able to create more value by making better, faster and more secure solutions in your domain, the more successful you will be as a leader. And you need creativity to achieve this. The more you are able to leverage your resources at your disposal, be they human resources or material resources or mineral resources, the more you'll be able to achieve your goals as a leader, the more you'll be able to succeed as a leader and you need creativity to achieve this. That does it for today's episode. Before I shut it down, I'm going to do a quick rundown of what we spoke about today. Today, I shared with you three reasons why you need creativity in leadership. And the first reason is to achieve the goal of solving a specific problem so that you can help your followers and help the people you lead to become more proficient at solving specific problems within their own domain and collectively achieve a common goal. For mutual benefits. The second reason why you need creativity in leadership is so that you can create value by creating a better environment or creating more revenue or creating more income or generating more sales or providing more of whatever value represents for you. And then the third reason why you need creativity in leadership is so that you can leverage resources so that you can be able to process the unprocessed resources at your disposal, be they human resources, be they mineral resources, be they financial resources, or what have you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I want you to watch out for my next episode as I'll be continuing in this line of thought. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.